Preparing Next Generation Sequencing Reads for OTU and Denoising Analysis. Today, most 16S studies are done using Illumina sequencing with overlapping paired reads. With Illumina reads, substitution errors are common, while insertion and deletion errors are rare. Most analysis pipelines give many spurious OTUs, and careful processing is necessary to minimize this problem. The main processing steps are merging, also called assembly, of paired reads, quality filtering to discard low quality reads, global trimming to ensure that there are no end gaps between reads of the same template, and discarding primer binding sequences. Illumina generates reads in FASTQ format, which includes a Q score for each base. Q is an integer value representing the probability of a base call error defined on a logarithmic scale. Here are some examples. Q20 means a 1% error probability, while Q2 means the base only has a one-third probability of being correct. With paired read merging, the R1 and R2 sequences are, are aligned to each other to get a consensus sequence in the overlapping segment. Mismatches are resolved by choosing the base, base call with higher Q. Identifying the consensus sequence is straightforward, but how should we calculate the merged Q scores? In the overlapping se segment, we have two independent observations of each base, and we can therefore use Bayes' theorem to calculate the posterior error probabilities and hence the posterior Q scores. The mathematics is reasonably straightforward, but several published papers got it wrong. The correct formulas are given in a 2015 paper that I wrote with my Danish colleague Henrik Flubia. Quality filtering is needed to minimize the number of low quality reads which cause spurious OTUs. Masking individual low quality bad bases is a bad idea because with Amplicon sequencing, we need to know all the positions with matches and mismatches. The popular strategy of trimming low quality ends is also a bad idea, as I will explain shortly. So we need a quality filter which keeps or discards full length reads. The most effective approach is to calculate the, the expected number of errors. This approach assumes that the error probabilities in the Q scores are correct and sets a threshold on the most probable number of bad bases in the entire read. The most natural and conservative approach is to keep only reads for which the most probable number of errors is zero. To fully exploit quality score information, you should start by using a Bayesian paired read merger, then use an expected error filter. This procedure works very well, as shown by testing on mock communities with known composition. Global trimming is important for calculating informative sequence abundances. Abundance is critically important for distinguishing correct sequences from their error clouds. The goal of global trimming is to ensure that there are no end gaps when reads of the same biological template sequence are aligned to each other. To see why this rule is important, consider what happens when low quality ends are trimmed from the reads, which is a popular strategy in the literature. Consider two reads A and B, which have been trun truncated to different lengths and are identical over the full length of the shorter sequence. Should we consider A and B to have the same sequence? If we answer yes and say that A and B have the same sequence, then the tail of B may get a high abundance even if it's been observed only once. Conversely, if we say that A and B have different sequences, then a single high abundance biological template sequence is fragmented over many different sequences, each one of which will have relatively low abundance. 
End gaps cause problems, and it's therefore better to ensure that reads of the same template have the same length. With paired reads, merging usually accomplishes this without further processing, because both the R1 and R2 reads terminate with primers. These primer binding sequences should be deleted because PCR forces matches to the oligos. Primer sequences are usually exactly at the start of the R1 and R2 reads, which means that recognizing the primer sequence is not necessary. It's enough just to delete a fixed number of bases. The primer should be deleted before quality filtering because each base adds a non-zero probability of error. To summarize, these are the steps required to, to process typical paired Illumina reads before OTU clustering or denoising. Reads should be merged using a Bayesian assembler. Next, the primer binding sequences should be deleted. Then, quality filtering should be done using an expected error filter. And finally, the unique sequences and abundances are identified. With typical 16S data, these processing steps discard 20 to 40% of the reads, but this is necessary to keep the number of spurious OTUs to a reasonable level. Note that once the OTUs have been identified, the unfiltered reads can be used to generate the OTU table, because reads with unacceptable numbers of errors will fail to match an OTU and will therefore do no harm. With this approach, 95% or more of the unfiltered reads are typically accounted for in the final OTU table.